Welcome everybody back to Phoenix Adventures. It has been a little bit, about six months probably since our last video. Well, that's mostly because there just hasn't been a whole lot to do in the last six months. And I'm just now getting back out on the road, visiting my favorite theme parks. And this year I plan on doing a few that I haven't been to, such as Cedar Point, Carowinds, Kings Dominion. Those are all on my list for this year, as well as returning favorites, such as where we're at today, Dollywood. I'm here today for the Flower and Food Festival, which they have every spring here at Dollywood. I've got my festival guidebook here handy right now. Mostly I'm just gonna use this to figure out where the food is because, I mean, let's be honest, that's really why I'm here. I mean, yeah, the coasters are good, but the food, it's so good here at Dollywood. I've already purchased my festival food pass online as well as my refillable mug for the season. I'm about to go pick those up and then I'm gonna grab me some cool beverage to have me through the day as well as maybe pick up my first food item of the day and then coasters or uh, maybe i might do a coaster first i'm not 100 percent sure on that i'm definitely hitting up lightning rod first though uh, the park today is absolutely bonkers it's really busy for a thursday which i didn't think it would be but i'm going to try to make the best no matter what happens today and just have a good time all right I see cold beverage has been acquired as well as my festival pass, which is a awesome color of purple, which is one of my favorite colors. Behind me, you can see the brand new Dolly Experience. I'm gonna check that out a little bit later as well. And you can see lightning rod up there, which I think is where I'm about to head, depending on the line. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Like I said, the park is packed today. I made my way over here to Lightning Rod. There she goes, right around her last corner right there, back into the station. I am going to see how long the line is here for this ride, because I am anxious to try this out, with it being my first time here this season. They did change this coaster up over the between last year and this year. They took out the launch up the lift hill. It is now just a chain lift. Kind of hard to see here in the shade, but the line looks to be about 35 minutes long. I think that's doable. I just got off of the new and improved, as Dollywood would say anyway, a lightning rod. It's improved because, I mean, they can run two trains now on it. Um, the maintenance time is probably better. It's not down as much, so therefore it is improved on that. But my poor lightning rod, they neutered it. They took out that launch and it's just not the same. It's still a great coaster. It's still probably the wildest coaster in the Smokies, I would say. But uh, I don't know. I missed the launch, honestly. Once you get over the crest of that lift hill, though, the rest of the ride is exactly the same. It's still just as fast and, you know, just as twisty and just as fun. But that launch up the hill, especially like once you get out of the station, then it just launches you right at first right there. Gonna miss that. All right, so next up, I think I'm gonna go grab one of my first festival tasting pass things of the day. See what we can find to eat here real quick. my first meal of the day it was a tough choice at the first stand i went to they had the the barbecue mac and cheese which sounded fantastic but they also had this mountaineer sandwich so i'm probably going to come back for the barbecue mac and cheese later today uh, i did see somebody else in front of me did get that and it was in a very very small cup so not as much as i think you should probably get for the 12.99 if you didn't have the pass but uh yeah, I think this right here, I think is going to be delicious. It's a uh, roast beef with, we've got some banana peppers, what it seems like, got some mayo on there. It's got like a, an au jour sauce. I, I've never known how to pronounce that really, but I'm going to dig into this and see what I think. All right, first bite into that. It's very dry. 
So uh, good thing they gave me the sauce here. So I'm going to try to pour some of the sauce here on it and see if that makes it any better here. I have a feeling this is just going to make it just messy, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right, let's try it with the sauce here. All right, with the sauce, it's actually quite good. But as I suspected, very messy. So, yeah, I would say this is pretty good. Um, a little hard to eat. Uh, maybe, maybe grab a fork. So, all right. So, fans of the channel may notice that it is only me here at Dollywood today, and it's probably going to be that way for most of my trips for the foreseeable future. That's because due to circumstances outside of my control, uh, I am now single once again. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what that's gonna mean for the channel as I'm walking through the park here real quick. Uh, so basically, it means my trips are still on. Um, I'm just gonna be taking them by myself. That does sort of suck because I do hate traveling and I do hate riding coasters and stuff like that by myself, but it is what it is. Now, of course, the positives to going to all these parks and stuff by myself is the fact that I'll be able to get around the park a whole lot faster. I don't have anybody slowing me down. Some rides do have single rider lines, so I might be able to get on the rides a little quicker. And I also have a lot more free time available so I can edit the videos and maybe, maybe try to make more videos. Of course, the biggest downfall is just not having anyone to actually share these experiences with, especially since I have a lot more places that I've never been that I do want to go to. So being back here at Dollywood is, of course, the first video of the vlogging season. But I have a lot more places I plan on heading to. Some familiar places that we went to last year and previously the year before. Uh, Kings Island, of course, is going to be the next one. I'm heading up to Holiday World again. We'll be going back to Bush Gardens, back to Silver Dollar City this year. A couple of new places I have planned for trips is heading up to Cedar Point for the first time I've ever been, as well as Carowinds and Kings Dominion. So with any luck, as the year progresses, hopefully I will find another theme park and coaster enthusiast to travel along with me. I do know that a few of my friends are going to be joining me for one or two of the trips, specifically Carowinds. But the way it's looking right now is a lot of these trips are just going to be me, myself, and I. Over here on the corner going into Craftsman's Valley, we have Miss Lillian's Millhouse Restaurant. This is a new version of the original restaurant that used to be here. Uh, that has been closed for remodeling for most of the season. Still not open yet, but it looks like construction's going well on it and it probably is going to be opening very, very soon. Stopping to take in a scenic view here of the old grist mill. If you're looking for the world famous Dollywood cinnamon bread, this right here is the spot for it. Now there are a couple more spots in the park where you can get the cinnamon bread but this is the original and to me I mean I don't think I would go anywhere else unless I absolutely had to in order to get that. I was hoping to try to maybe grab some before I headed out here at the end of the night but unfortunately coming into the park today I had to pay for parking which was $25. Uh, I do have a silver pass and when I renewed my pass for this year instead of going diamond I just went silver because I thought I'd only be down here twice this season. But the way things have changed, I may end up coming back down here a little more often. I'm uh, gonna try to stop and see if I can't upgrade my pass to the gold before heading out of here tonight. And as I walk around the park today and just kind of ramble with my thoughts and stuff about being here, I'm also trying to capture some of the flower displays they have here for the festival. For those who can't be here themselves, I got some food in me, so I'm making my way up through Craftsman's Valley. And I was going to try Blazing Fury here, but that line is all the way out the door, which means it's probably going to be a pretty long wait. I'll probably come back to this in a little bit. I do want to ride Blazing Fury as much as I can, though, because I, I have a feeling that this one isn't going to be here that much longer. The one at Silver Dollar City called Fire in the Hole, they recently closed, um, but they didn't close it completely. They did just kind of redo the entire ride. They built an entire new one. They themed it all to try to preserve the original ride experience. And something tells me since Silver Dollar City and Dollywood are sister parks, that that's probably going to happen here maybe as well. 
Now, last year I did go to Silver Dollar City and I did get the ride, the original fire in the hole. If I had to compare the two between Blazing Fury and Fire in the Hole, I would say I enjoyed Fire in the Hole maybe a little bit better. And that's mostly because I just felt it was maybe a smoother ride. Could have just been maybe the uh, the train that I was in, it's, you know, like your seats could have a lot to do with it. But I just, I, I, we rode Fire in the Hole once and that one ride I just felt was smoother than that. But I still like Blazing Fury though. To me, that one's always gonna hold a special place in my heart because I originally was down here at Dollywood before they had all the coasters, before Wild Eagle, before Lightning Rod, before any of this. Back then, there was only a few rides, mostly flat rides, and a lot of it was, you know, they had like Blazing Fury, they had the River Rapids, and they had an old mine train coaster, which is uh, up here where Tennessee Tornado is right now. Speaking of Tennessee Tornado, I'm gonna check the line on this and see how long we got. So I never really got to ride Tennessee Tornado too much previously. My ex, she didn't really like the rough coasters too much. She enjoyed riding them, but it was a one and done for the most part. With it just being me, I can jump on these as much as I want throughout the day. All right, so first ride on Tennessee Tornado for the season. It's uh, just as good as it always is. I mean, yeah, it's an aero coaster. It's shaky, it's rough, but it's actually the smoothest aero coaster of any that is still in existence right now, I would say. Next up on my agenda for the day, the one and only Wild Eagle, the first wean coaster I've ever ridden. Still one of my favorites. Uh, it's probably my second favorite in the park next to Lightning Rod. So we're gonna jump on this one here real quick. There's a 25 minute wait. Of course, it did say that Tennessee Tornado was a 10 minute wait, and all I had to do on that one was just wait for the next train. So, with any luck, this one shouldn't be too bad. If you're gonna go for a while, they will make some noise. Sounds like things are ready. See you back in 222. There is some future construction going on over here behind Mystery Mine where the old river battle ride used to be as well as the like festival plaza where they would put like the giant pumpkin tree and the giant Christmas tree during Christmas. All of that would usually be here. Uh, word is that this is going to be a giant restaurant that they're going to put in here. I personally would have liked to see maybe a new flat ride here, but I guess a restaurant will do. I'm considering the food here at Dollywood is always great. I was thinking about getting on Mystery Mine as I was coming around the park here, but the line itself, that looks a little too long for me. So instead, I believe I'm gonna head up the hill here and we're gonna head into Wildwood Grove and see how long the line is for uh, Big Bear Mountain back in here. So one of my favorite drinks currently, and it's actually because of Dollywood that I actually found it, is the Powerade Mountain Berry, the, the blue Powerade. It's really, really good. There's only a couple of places in the park, I think, where you can actually get this. This is one of them here in Wilderness Grove at Sweets and Treats. So I'm gonna run down here, I'm gonna grab me some, some Powerade. All right, I got my Mountain Berry Blast is what this Powerade is called. I knew it was Mountain Berry something. So I grabbed that, heading the rest of the way in, and I'm pretty sure uh, Big Bear Mountain's gonna have a fairly long line, but look at this view. Is that not just absolutely beautiful? All 
All right, so the line for Big Bear Mountain is about 35 minutes long. But you know what? I think I'm just going to have to grin and bear it. And if you didn't like that pun, then you obviously haven't been on Big Bear Mountain. I just got off Big Bear Mountain, and uh, as it said, the line was quite long, uh, 35 to 40 minutes. It said it was going to be about a 35 minute long line. It was pretty close to that, mostly because it was barely moving. Uh, okay, I I'll, I'll stop with the bear pun jokes. All right, so I got another thing of Blue Powerade. You can also get it over here at Ned's Refreshment over here. So it seems like the Blue Powerade, the Mountain Berry Blast, is only available here in Wilderness Gro Grove. So I haven't seen it anywhere else in the park, but I am going to keep an eye out for it. You know, kind of one thing that bugs me about Wilderness Grove is this supposed to be the kids area of the park, the family oriented area of the park. And yet there just, there doesn't seem to be hardly any shade over it here. It's just like, this didn't say it was going to be a very hot day, but the sun is definitely beaming down right now. Um, it's not above 80, I don't think. I think it's like high 70s possibly right now at the moment there is a little bit of shade to be found but you really got to search for it I, really this whole area just could just use a lot more trees in my opinion so i stopped here at mountain grove merchants because i wanted to check out this big black bear standee they got here in the front with the big bear mountain shirt one could say it looks like a fairly grizzly attack now, even though Big Bear Mountain is a family thrill coaster, if it's just too much thrill for you, you can always check out Black Bear Trail. Keep in mind, though, on this one, you gotta ride it bareback. All right, that was the absolute last bear pun that I'm going to do. I promise. I'm 100% going to put a pause on that. All right, that being said, uh, I'm gonna head out of Wilderness Grove. I'm gonna head back to the front of the park. I think it's time to eat again, so let's see what else we can find as part of our festival pass now. For my second meal of the day, I went with the honey barbecue ribs. This looks delicious. You get a little bit of coleslaw right there. Obviously the, the honey barbecue ribs right there on a piece of pretty good sized bread and some pickles because pickles always go good with barbecue. All right, so these are bone in ribs. Um, let's, let's give these a shot here real quick. It's pretty good, pretty good indeed. Again, a little dry for my taste, but the taste is spot on. It's really, really good barbecue. All right, I got a little bit more of a taste of the, the actual sauce itself. It's sweet, but tangy. Yeah, I'd give this a five out of five. This is really good. Try a little bit of the, the coleslaw here that comes with it. Coleslaw is nothing special. It's coleslaw. All right, guys, welcome back to Dollywood. I say welcome back because yesterday after I got done eating the barbecue ribs, um, I my phone went dead on me. I couldn't find a charger anywhere like the fuel rod stations i couldn't find those anywhere um, i didn't have a cable with me to charge my phone over at lightning rod like red's diner and stuff over there so i just ended up calling it a day basically i figured you know what i'll just come back today make a better day out of it when i had yesterday because uh, yesterday i was pretty much just a little unprepared um, so yeah all this kind of coming to the park by myself thing is kind of new to me so I'm just getting the hang of it, so to speak. Um, I also got very sunburned yesterday. Wasn't expecting that. It wasn't that sunny out, but I don't know. I did, so I was gonna grab some uh, sun lotion as I come into the park here, but 
Folks, here's a great tip for you. If you're going to get, if you think you need like sun lotion, buy it before you come into the park because I went to grab some and it was almost 30 bucks for like sunburn lotion. So yeah, don't do that. Don't do what I did. Grab it at like a dollar store or something before you come in. All right, so plans for the day. We're gonna ride some coasters I didn't get to ride yesterday. We're gonna eat some more food we didn't get to eat yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna start off by throwing my pack into a locker. I'm gonna grab me another refill for the day. And then we're gonna go ride some coasters. First coaster of the day is gonna be Thunderhead, one of my favorite wooden coasters and a, like my top three coaster here at Dollywood. So I'm gonna go jump on that. All right, so I won't be doing Thunderhead right now. Apparently it is closed for the moment. Hopefully it's gonna reopen uh, like later today because it's one of my top three here, like I said. Gotta ride it today. So with any luck, it'll pop back open a little later. Instead, I'm gonna head on up the path here. Gonna check out Mystery Mine. Didn't get to do this one yesterday because the line was just way too long. Uh, hopefully it's not that long right now at the moment. This is the, the opening of the park. It's about maybe 11 a.m., maybe a little after that. All right, so I'm up here at Mystery Mine and the line definitely looks pretty long, but according to the ride queue times, it's only about 10 minutes. I'm gonna give it a shot. So I got my one and done on Mystery Mine out of the way. So I said it was a 10 minute wait. It's actually more like 15, but I always like to just come down here and I only like to do Mystery Mine once. It's just such a rough coaster that, I don't know, just a little too jerky for me. It's still fun though. And I always like to at least give it one ride in while I'm here. All right, guys, so next on my list of coasters for the day, it's gonna be a Fire Chaser Express. This is another coaster that I consider to be a one and done. So once I get done with this one, I will probably go check and see if Thunderhead is open for the day. I uh, jump on that one. And then after that, I'll probably go eat and then just enjoy some of my favorites, which is like Big Bear Mountain, Wild Eagle, Lightning Rod, those like that. So uh, let's jump on this one and then head on out to the rest of the park. So that's my one and done on Fire Chaser Express. And then the reason I kind of only do that one one time is just because of it's just a jerky ride. And I've always said this, I really think just the seats themselves on the train need a little bit more cushion in them. Just, I don't know why they don't make these launch coasters, these small family attractions, just with, I don't know, put a little foam in the seats, not that hard. But yep, that's that one. Um, won't have to do that one again until the next time I'm here. Also, it was probably the longest wait I've had in line my couple of days here at Dollywood. So, uh, but next I'm gonna head out and try to find something to eat. Not sure what we're gonna grab, but something off the, the festival list here.
Alrighty guys, this time I went with the cinnamon sugar sweet potato fries. So we got uh, the sweet potato fries obviously. We got a little bit of cheese on there and some bacon and of course a cinnamon covered throughout. Uh, this should be pretty good. I right, try to get quite a bit onto one fork here just to get one big bite here and try this out. Mm, this is really good. I never used to be a fan of uh, sweet potatoes but I've grown accustomed to them and a lot of things that they serve here at Dollywood are, are when they do the cinnamon or the, uh, the sweet potato stuff with it, it's just really good. So I also found that the festival booths right up front at the front of the park here where all the festival food is mostly located at also has the Mountain Berry Blast Powerade which I really enjoy. All right, guys, here's my second to last meal of the day. This is the barbecue mac and cheese. I love mac and cheese. I love barbecue chicken. I mean, how could this go wrong, right? All right, let's try to get a little bit of the chicken and some of the mac and cheese all together on here if we can. I'm getting a lot of chicken here. You know what? I'm just going to get some of the chicken first, get that out of the way. Oh, that is delicious right there. All right, it's a, it's a big old bite, but I got some of the mac and cheese and I got some of the chicken on the fork. So let's try this combo here. All right, so this right here, this is possibly the best thing I've had during the entire flower and food festival since I've been here. This is fantastic. You know, Dollywood's mac and cheese always is good, but I somehow think that this, this is just better. I don't know if it's the mixture of the barbecue chicken mixed in with the mac and cheese, but oh my God, this, this is my number one right now for this festival. I just got done filming my walking tour of Dollywood that should be up on the channel in as soon as I can get it up there, uh, which I've promised these before and I never can seem to get them up. But this time, it's going to happen this time. Uh, as I was walking around the park doing that tour, I noticed that the ride queue times have went down drastically. I didn't see anything over 10 minutes, really. So, I also noticed uh, Thunderhead is back open. And I'm about to head up there and get my first ride in for the season on Thunderhead. So I finally got my ride in on Thunderhead. Not only that, it was, it was basically a walk-on. So I don't know if I've ever ridden the back row or not, but I think I just found my favorite new seat on Thunderhead. That one, it seemed to be the smoothest of any time I've ever ridden it. I, so I think the back seat is probably the best one. And that's just my opinion though. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just running super smooth today. So here's something I don't see at Dollywood very often, Mystery Mines Q, pretty much a walk-on. I mean, it may happen, but I've never seen it before. Might as well go ahead and jump on it. 
So mystery mine is usually a one and done for me, but with the line, I mean, basically none at all. It was pretty much a walk on. I figured, you know, why not? Might as well go ahead and do it. So now I'm getting ready to head up to uh, Big Bear Mountain. I'm thinking to go back to Lightning Rod and probably Wild Eagle and just finish out the day. I mean, at this point, I mean, I'm, it's almost like halfway through the day, maybe a little past, and I've already done pretty much everything I wanted to do at the park. So it's been an interesting afternoon. A little overcast, so good thing I didn't buy that sunscreen earlier. 30 bucks would have been spent on pretty much nothing. I didn't really need it. about six o'clock and I've ridden pretty much everything here twice or more thanks to the lines just I mean the whole park is just pretty much thinned out so the lines are almost walk on on everything I mean there's a few I had to wait on just a little bit but for the most part it's been empty I don't know why on a Friday night but yeah it just seems that way so I am about to head to Blazing Fury first time I'm going to get to do that this season so heading in we go I just got off Blazing Fury, and you know the funny thing is for a ride that's themed to a town that's burning completely to the ground, it's the coolest place in the park right now. Strange. But anyway, Blazing Fury, always good, just for nostalgia. Just one of those old time fashion dark rides, and I just love it. I don't I don't know why. Um, it does need some improving though. I, I think if they was to do this one the way they do Fire and Hole in Silver Dollar City, I would not be sad over that. All right, now it's time for the last Fire and Food Festival menu item that I have available to try. This is the honey garlic chicken skillet. Now, actually, I was expecting this to be in one of those little small bowls. I'm so glad they actually put it in, in one of these. Although, we could get more for what, it's, what they're actually charging you, I think. For the sampler with the, the food pass, I think this is pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's better than just a little tiny bowl like you get with the mac and cheese and stuff. So, let's give this a shot and see what we think of it. All right, first impressions, this is hot, not like spicy hot, just it's, it's really hot. So I'm going to have to cool this down before I try to eat it. I'm going to try to blow on it just so it's not so hot. Yeah, that's much better. You can really taste the garlic and stuff on it too. It's really good. So basically we have some honey garlic chicken. Uh, it's got some like red onions right in here uh, on top of some potatoes. And the potatoes are really crispy. But yeah, this is this is tasty. Um, I would say I would rank this pretty high as far as some of my favorites here. So here's something you rarely ever see. A lightning rod right now has a zero minute wait. It's pretty much walk on right now. Always a beautiful sunny day with your hometown host.
right, guys, so that about does it for my day here at Dollywood. I've pretty much done every single thing I wanted to do about twice over. It's been fun. Uh, it took me two days. I wasn't planning on doing two days here. I was only planning on doing one. But uh, just trying to do everything by myself and just trying to figure things out. So I ended up making the best out of it, though. It does suck that I did have to do everything alone. But like I said, that's the kind of the way it's going to be going for the foreseeable future. But uh, we'll see how things go. Like I said, though, I mean, I was able just by myself, though, today. I was able to just like, get where I needed to go. I uh, didn't have to wait for anybody, so I was able to just get around the park a whole lot easier and get all my filming and stuff done and enjoy the day a lot more. So that's going to do it from here in the Smokies. My name is Phoenix, and I will see you guys in the next video, wherever you guys are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.